obviously, uh, and uh, English is my uh, fourth language. And so <laughs> uh, sometime I just want to make sure I check something for my own self to understand. No, actually, I just took a pause because I was laughing in my mind about some of the stuff that I heard um, over the weekend. And I was I proposed the same conversation that I'm going to do uh, live with you on the stream because uh, I found very fascinating sometime. Um, well, first of all, in the in the biggest in the big picture of life, uh, sometimes we tend to either overlooking things or over explaining things. I, I like to do neither. I would just want to simplify the process of this particular subject, which is wine, wine to enjoy with friend, wine to enjoy with family. Clearly, we could go in a depth of a conversation for uh, what is the chemical makeup of wine and so on and so on. I, I think it's too simplistic because to be honest with you, nobody really cares. Uh, some people do because obviously they study. That's how they get paid for it. Um, I always said to restaurateurs and uh, colleague mine that they own uh, uh, a wine store. And if you really don't want to sell wine, over explain it. Um, you kill the joy. Because to me, um, when you buy a bottle of wine, uh, you want to know a few things about the wine. But most importantly, succinct and excitable. Right. So. Uh, the greatest things about drinking anything really at this point in our life is that we just want to have something that brings in the crowd, brings in the friends, the family, the reasons. Uh, it's a basically a icebreaker, something that we say, you know, first thing you see somebody, hey, how are you doing? How's life? How's, would you like a drink? Right. And they say, oh, yeah, yeah. Well, what do you have? Oh, you want a beer? You want a glass of wine? You want a tequila? Whatever. So. This, this mechanism of relationship is really the essence of life. So to me, the, the greatest paradox is always the same, that when people get into, into a, a, a very deep knowledge of something, they tend to want the world to know all the things they know. And so it becomes a, a race to the top of, I know something you didn't know, or uh, did you know about this? So, but it, it, when it's too technical, it becomes less enticing, less sexy. And I love sexy. I, I'm, I spend all my life about selling, representing things that has the human side of it, the, the collective conscience of why we as a human tend to gather, the tend to share, tend to celebrate or sometime mourn or sometime... Um, share sadness whatever the the, the the human factor is that's to me the focus that's where i go in this is where i draw myself inside in fact often i made a joke me personally i like humans with all the fault with all their inadequacy their all idiosyncrasies i still do i prefer human over animals every day in fact it took our millennials and millennials evolution for us to get to a point we can actually talk to each other even find the common language to talk to it's not easy think about if you put in a room a korean and italians uh, a person from zimbabwe and it, it, you got to find a common language you already know you have a different culture you have a different outlook on things what seems to me ugly and appreciable for another culture is probably the way life is the excitement and so i don't discount their excitement i just don't understand it i want to learn and that's the beauty so to me, when I have the opportunity to learn the difference in between my culture, my tradition, and another one, it becomes a wholesome expression of life himself. Because as a human being, that is, that is what we have above all. We have this amazing ability to learn, this amazing ability to share, this crazy, amazing ability to progress progress through our life in a very intelligent and deliberate way and sometimes unconsciously without knowing we do things that are so amazing and sometimes stupid i mean look, we love that that's what human is about human is about perfection no 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 human is about growth it's about evolution it's about understanding 
I, I see these people out there fighting with the AI. Oh, my God, someday the computer's going to take... No, they won't. They won't. They won't. They never will. We spend the most of our human history always worry about... The Greek worry about all the gods and their anger. And then the Roman worry about all the other stuff. And yeah, look, dude, let me explain something to you. We are it. We are the center of all universe. We are. We don't fly like a bird. We fly better than a bird. We got planes with thousands of people in it. Are you serious? We got rocket that can reach the outer space. Where is the bird going to go? It can't even get out of the, the atmosphere. Are you serious? You, you, I mean, I get people that just sit there and mesmerized by a spider. Oh, it can make it can make a silk. Yeah, and we have Versace. Now, what do you think? You're going to take a, a spider web or you want to take a Versace? I'll take a Versace every day of the week. Yeah, I look good, babe. You know, it's, it's, it's a t totally different world. Why we are wasting ourselves with this amusement of things that mean nothing is the paradox. We love wine for all the things the wine I don't have. Not for what's in the wine. It's for outside the wine. The bottle is a medium for the connections of humans. It's not the hand all. Will you honestly believe that if you put a bottle of Lafitte on the table, the world is going to be better? It feels wet. Flavorful, and you have hangover if you think too much. That is exactly what happened every single bottle of wine you put in there, whether it costs a dollar or $50 million. But the people you drink with, the people you celebrate for, the reason why you're there, that is what wine represents. So for all my friends, master wine, master sommelier, master, I love you guys. I understand. I appreciate your dedication and by the way we share a lot of the same feeling and concern we want a better product we want a more more uniqueness more particular but this is us this is us in a ether you know up there in the clouds talking to each other where nobody's listening my customers out there my friend out there my my family out there they just want to know that they're drinking a good bottle of wine and hopefully it gets a nice little funny story to tag along you know what i'm saying so when I pop a bottle of Chianti, I have so much to tell you. Less about the wine and more about where the wine is from. But the people who make the wine. This is what it's about. This is not about, oh, this Chianti Classico from Berardenga. It's a more sophisticated. It's got a more backbones. It's got, but from, 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 hey, stop, stop, stop. You're killing yourself. Stop killing yourself. I have seen thousands of clients passing through my doors. We open a good bottle of wine, a nice Chianti, good flavor, good acidity, nice pomegranate, sour cherry, little back spice of black peppers. Mm. Mm -mm. It's good. I'm loving it. Sure. There are some amazing Chianti and some okay Chianti, but nevertheless, nevertheless, they both live in the same organism. Us, the human. The organism is who we are and what we represent. Why we there for in the first place? Sometime, the reason why you're there, a bottle of candy won't do. You have to entertain a different type of client who react to more to. Are you away? It's coming. They want a screaming ego because they want to hear ooh, ooh, the big eagle screaming. But that's okay. That's wonderful. Understanding that. It's 80% of the, the fight. And so there's no guilt if you perform an act of pleasure because it actually gives the end result that you were looking for, which was entertain your guest or your family or friend, whatever, or your lover for that reason. And yet, you're enjoying the wine and the process of drinking the beautiful wine. And if you can have intelligently slip in there through the conversation, tread like a nice little silk line through the whole conversation, the little bit 
of the story, how you got the wine, why you got the wine, where you got the wine, who made the wine, and then it's more substantial. You know, it's like this beautiful painting that starts with a beautiful background. It's kind of beige with a little bit of a splash. And then you, you see a tree and then you see a house. And then you see the hilltop and you see the horizon. And before you know, there's beautiful painting like the one to be in my back. But you have the ability as a human being to create that. The moment you take all that, you throw it away and you say, hey, you know, I bought this beautiful bottle of because it's fifteen hundred dollars and you can hard to find and by the way you know that particular vineyards he produces a he has a a percentage of alkaline is so balanced and the ph is so great that when we actually crush the wine the phenolic has a a point zero. really what do you think is going to happen a yard it's always going to happen you know what the people going to react to I tell you what the people react to. I had this friend of mine who knew a friend of mine who actually has an allocation of a Screaming Eagle for about five years. It took about seven years to get on the list. And I was able to pry one of them. I had to give him like, I don't even tell you how much money because if I do, then it becomes the money. So you leave it up hanging like a, an hanging fruit, suspensions. Like, oh my God, how much was it? Was it five? Was it three? Was it two? And oh, but tonight I thought you guys were the best people to open with. Boom, you drop the bomb. What happened now? Huh? What do you think is going to happen? Whatever is in that bundle of wine is irrelevant. That wine is amazing. Have you seen the resurrection of, the, of Christ? That's exactly what that bottle of wine becomes. Seven days after that, you're going to rise again. You cannot stop your friend, your family. To talk about that bottle of wine for another five, six months. And every time the word screaming eagle comes about, oh, they got to tell you the special night they had with Massimo or John or whatever. Oh, my God. And this guy, he was able to get this. We didn't even know how much he paid for. This, my friend, succinctly, is the true reality of humanity. We are amazing. Why, why is it so hard for so many people, especially in this country, one of the greatest places on the face of the earth? And I can testify for you guys because I've been around, I traveled. This is one of the greatest places on earth. Not, not, not a perfect one. Don't, 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 don't jump all over my back. No, no, no. We're made of humans, and you know what we're capable of. Right? I already explained to you where I was. Genius and crazy people in the same head. Janus Bifrontis, the man with two faces. We can turn and be the greatest person you ever met, and can, we can turn on the other side of two seconds later and just be the biggest jackass you ever met. We're capable of that. What well, doesn't mean we have to. That's what education, civility is about. Do you refrain to be a big jackass? Right? And you try <laughs> when you can. To be a great guy, a great girl, or whatever. Whatever it's PC these days, right? Oh, but yet, a great human being. Huh? How do you like that? But, but, the technical stuff, my friends, my doctor friends, please. In the wine business, it's a definitely less sexy. I didn't say it wasn't important. I'm sure you can talk about I've been in many panels. Uh, sorry if you didn't get the excitement that I got. Sorry if the people in there thought you were bored. You speak your speech. You said what you know. I tell you what I know. And what I know is human relationship. To me, a bottle of wine is less important than the person is in front of me. If you started with that, pro if you honestly, Start with that project in mind, the principle in mind. Every single bottle you're going to open is going to be pretty damn good bottle of wine. If you reverse the order, you want the microscope every single time. The single worst things we have done to the wine industry, we actually killed the excitement of a spontaneity. There are people waiting every month for 
publications, and I'm not even going to mention the name. It's none of my business. People do whatever they want. But they wait for the publication to publish what is the highest score wine, what is in a... You're missing the whole point. They're not telling you what the high score is. They're not telling you what the best wine. They sell commercials. They sell advertisers. Just like the moron on TV every week, every night. They threw bombs left and right only because that way you stay focused. They click and then you watch TV and next thing you know they sell you Prozac, whatever they sell. I'm not against commercial. I'm all for commercial. I think, honestly, it's the lifeblood of our businesses. But seriously, when we're talking about a bottle of wine, it's that simple. There are so many beautiful wine around the world. In many areas of the world. Whether it was a simple Sauvignon Blanc from New Zealand, which, honestly, I like it, but it's not my favorite. They're on the growth, they're on the green, and yeah, they try to sell it as a, some amazing, unique thing. No, it's it's good. It's nice. Uh, do I have a better Sauvignon Blanc? Sure. About 10 of them before that. But I will still drink it with the right friends, the right crowd, the right food. Sure, of course I do, even without any of that. If that's what I got in the refrigerator, I'll pop and I'll drink it. I'll have a glass of wine. It's refreshing. It's easy. It's not life shatter, but it's not offensive. So to me, the paradox has always been the same. You know, you know how this paradox business started? Yeah, well, because the French... They eat a lot of cheese, a lot of fat food, and they drink red wine, and that's supposed to be the reason why they're healthy. First of all, nobody knows how healthy they are, okay? Because they're not publishing every individual French person their medical records. But if by health means they are less skinny or more skinny than you are, well, that could be a tribute to many things. So that paradox is another pushed notion out there of cultural supremacy no you don't know that that's the reason why sure reflavanol it's a wonderful acid it thins some of the fat but so is the chicory right you can get reflavanol in 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 a uh, grapefruit you can get i mean in grape juice you don't have to need a bottle of wine in fact probably the effect of reflavanol it's less effective because you have the contra effect of alcohol which is influenced the liver and we're not going to get into medical discussion with you guys i love you i'm not going to insult you or offend you out there i'm just telling you facts so the facts that will bring you to where i'm at would you please just enjoy the damn thing have a bottle of wine now every time you open a bottle of wine it's got to be a score i hear my friends great collectors what do you think this is going to be on 88 99 it's like seriously <laughs> Wow, we opened a fantastic bottle of wine that you spend uh, way too much, okay? You've been host. And we have the pleasure, because you can afford it, to be together. And this is the conversation we're going to have. What I think, it's a 90, to, to what? Compared to what? what? What are the parameters here? We compare this to what? To Bakchart? We compare this to some of the top burgundies or some of the top... That it makes no sense. I don't want to feel guilty when I'm enjoying something. I don't want to feel inadequate when I'm having something. Neither should you. You should be out there and celebrate the fact that as a human being, you have the opportunity to do something that is so beautiful and simple and amazing at the same time with your friends. Why you are wasting physical time in stuff that absolutely is a narcissistic and ineffective. A bottle of wine. In most cases. It's a agricultural beverage that is commercialized on a large scale. In some cases, they are a work of labor and love from very small traditional family around the world. In either case, we have not yet established one is better than the others. We just established two realities. They are 
consequential, but not definite. So, a big industrial group can have a very large scale production, and yet, and yet, sponsor and subsidize a small family farm who creates a very beautiful little brand. It or they have a functional reality to our table. It's the same conversation that people want to have about global warming and climate change. I've been so many wine events where speakers, they start and end the conversation with, oh, because climate change, I, one time, please, just one time, explain to us how, why, and what are the effects that consequentially changed for you to make a better or worse wine. I mean, no one denies anything here. We just want it to be explained. I grew up on a family farm. My grandfather sold firewood for a living. Since I was age five, I used to go in the mountain and help my grandpa cooking char charcoals. I got pictures and lifestyle to prove. I spent the most of my youth year from seven on to when I started traveling, 15, going up and down the mountain with a caravan of donkeys and horses, bringing down firewoods and bringing down charcoal for all the merchants, and that's my love for food because I used to go to restaurants, bakery, and everybody else. I know most of the sellers, they used to make wine because I used to bring charcoal and firewood, and I used to see the frauds and the good stuff they used to make, and I learned from very little eyes. So is intelligence guided by experience that it gives you the information you truly need? Not some bookworm they keep on open and tell you things are repeated like a bunch of erupting things out of their mouth like a volcano. Oh my God, you shouldn't know. No, you don't. You don't know. You have uh, no idea. The first fraud in a biblical term, it was a Jesus in the, in the wedding of a con. He turned water into wine. That you should know everything you need to know. He was Jesus. But there are a lot of seller masters or a lot of tavern owner. They are just as crafty as a Jesus with the less good intention. So rather than tell me these generic things through up and everybody goes, oh, yeah, yeah, sure. No, no, actually explain to us. And if it is, if it is, no argument against or for the climate changing. And you know that. So then the question is, how you take advantage since the earth is greener, right? Since the season get warmer, do you imagine if you live in some of the cold area of Germany? Now you're making a better wine, don't you? All right, you, you you came up with in Germany. They came up with all the law about sugar because they can't get the sugar up where to produce a good enough to ferment. Now you should be kissing the 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 the. the the green gas and the truck and methane and just say, hey, God bless you because now I'm making a better wine. If you're in the hills of a Piedmont and in September it was raining and the, you had to rush to take the thing down and it was harsh and green, that's why Barolo was so harsh, it was so green because you can never get to ripeness in time before the mold begins. And then you have to blanket the damn thing with all kinds of anti-mold chemical because otherwise your wine would be gone. Now, you can sit down in October and actually pick the grape. If that's your case, then it's a good case. So, look around. A friend of mine had this beautiful thing online about, and he was very, very simplistic about it, but it was great about the fire. It's a paradox. If you know that the climate is changing, if you know that we have a global warming, would you become more proactive to clean the woods, to clean the forest, to give a permit for people to build the houses but with a much larger buffer? I mean, that's common sense, right? Same thing with everything else. Paradox. Guilt or joy? It should be neither. It should be prepared. It should be educated. It should be intelligent. And so to me, simply put, I find 
either people don't tell you the whole truth, they try to constantly aggravate you or manipulate you, whatever terms you like. But with me, you're going to get one story and one story only. I care about you. I care about what we drink. I care about how we drink, when we drink, we do we drink. I care about the simple things that gives us joy, allows the house to have a guilt less. It gives all of us this warm embrace, even in the age of coronavirus. Because humans without humanity is like drinking a bottle of wine alone in misery and looking at a dumpster. We can have that. That's silly. To reduce everything into a chemical formula, it's less about the wine and more about you want to tell me what you know. You know what to me? I saw my grandfather, I saw my uncle, I saw my father with uh, 20, 30 friends, improvised party, and it was a party, with only putting a five liter jug around top of the middle of the table and a bunch of glasses that my mom used to get it from buying the soap and they came inside, it was, it was to call the Kim box. And it were absolutely stupid glass with all flowers in it. There was no legs, there was no glycerin, it was nothing. It was just drinking. And when I look back on that simple life, when I look back on the true challenge, we're talking about Second World War after the post-war of a country and a place where we were completely devastated. The joy, the simple, amazing joy that these people had with having nothing, just a glass of wine and a piece of bread and a cheese. I hope we could clone that and put it into people's head. They understand that the richness, the beauty, the glory, the wonderful life that we have right now, the varieties that come in from all over the world, the quality of winemaking that comes from all over the world. Sure, should we always be vigilant, but we should stop making all these metrics, all this super highway of informations of the things that have a very real fact into how good the wine is. They don't know. They have no clue. Honestly, I sit in cellars. I see what they do. They can swirl their glass as long as they want to. That percentage of grapes in there, they don't exist. They just happen to be the grapes that are popular now. I have a sit with the master wine. They told me there was a Cabernet, and it was actually Corvina Volcella from Valpolicella. It was just done the same way, a lot of char, a lot of wood. Didn't it taste like Cabernet? And I went to the cellar, and I asked the winemakers. I said, no, we didn't have one pound of Cabernet. But we kind of taste a bunch of American Cabernet, from Central Coast, and we thought that oh, we can make something like that because our vendor, which was the importer, sold it to California, so we were happy with that. We could make one that was about $30, $40, and we were happy because we sell it for five. So the reality is much more different what is in reality <laughs> that gets completely represented every day. So this weekend, I brought in a, two wonderful wines, particularly two wines, one from the northeast of Italy, which was a gorgeous Sauvignon Blanc from uh, Puyati, a great family of producers, just medium-sized, very good stuff. Clean, polished, easy to drink, not a lot of uh, overtone or undertone, a very well-balanced Sauvignon Blanc that you can enjoy. Not very expensive at all, easy to drink every day. Refreshing, good quality, you get a little bit of the Sauvignon trays, which is sometimes it can be a little bit green tomato, sometimes figs. But this was a really wrapped in a nice fruit without the being uh, too off the mark, but good acidity, very good dryness. And then we brought in a um, wonderful reserva from uh, Tuscany, a Chianti Classical Reserva with one of the royalty of uh, Tuscany, which is the Mazzei family. They've been around for a long time. Uh, some people call them modernist. I think they just much more in tune with the con modern consumption. But the Serlapo, which is a wonderful uh, Chianti Reserva, and they are trays, historical trays, of uh, down to the 1300s, uh, 
So we're talking about wine with the deep roots in history. And of course, we know for a fact that what they were drinking in 1300 is definitely not drinking now. But the historical reference, it gives you a sense of place in history, a sense of place in the wonderful constellations of wine making, wine growing, and uh, legendary on that because the, the Matsei family, if you're in Tuscany, you would know they are very important people. They produce quite a wonderful group of wines. They are representative, some of the old tradition and some of the new uh, international tradition. But either way, they are serious producer. They have a great commitment and the wine is really incredibly valued. So you can taste and enjoy with your family a tremendous bottle of wine with below 40 bucks. That's my point. But on top of that, you're, you're, you're drinking a wine that has an historical background. That makes you imagine if you travel in the hills of Tuscany, this time of the, the years where the porcini mushrooms and the chestnuts, the wild boar, the cinta senese. Don't you think that's a great story? I mean, I, 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 I think so. I get excited. I have a beautiful memory of the time I was in the, you know, in the piazza, uh, sitting there in the invert piazza where the palio runs and overlooking and have this beautiful salumeria on the side street. They only have a two board, the big and, uh, and uh, large and uh, large and small. And th there are two guys in the back there. They've been there since the beginning, and they just uh, slice and put them on your useful uh, butcher paper. And you go outside. There's no inside, so there's a little stand with a little board on the side of the windows, and you pour over there. And they say, "You want a wine, white or red?" And usually it's a Chianti or Vernaccio San Gimignano. Very simple, straightforward, good stuff. And you sit there in the street of Siena and you think to yourself, that's what life is made. That's what it means to be a rich. Not a millionaire, a billionaire, just rich. A wealthy person. A person that owns the time of that moment. That is free to do something so simple and so beautiful at the same time. Wealthy enough to be able to enjoy a place where history has written so many pages from Pope to some of the greatest artists in the world. Two steps above the particular Salomeria, about 10 minutes, seven minutes walk, is one of the greatest Duomo in the world. Second only, second only to the Vatican. The greatest marble sculpture ever made in terms of building black and white marble. Two Pope came from the area. Now, for you not Catholic, this is not important. But it is. Because in the major, I mean, come on, you guys get excited someone who wins an Oscar about some movies. This is the Pope. He governs as a power over millions and millions of faithful people around the world. That's pretty impressive, don't you think? Definitely more impressive than Al Pacino or De Niro, who reads from a script and they have uh, 25 people to figure out how to messaging and remaster it. And before you know, they take out of 50 shots, one major shots, and they turn them in and then boom. No, we're talking about real history. The shape of our history, the Renaissance, where humans, start dreaming of humanistic way of living where darkness move into the light where our history was slowly being written through sculpture la pietà from michelangelo to da vinci to botticelli and giotto this is what a, a glass of wine and a sh charcuterie board represent this is what I present for the glory of joy and beauty and pleasure. The paradox is that if we reduce everything into scientific notion, then the other two things are gone. Joy and pleasure are gone. The only thing is left. It's a very, very aseptic conversation that nobody really cares. Because, my friend, if you have a doubt, the only thing we truly need in our life 
is a gray glass of water. Everything else, it's our own humanistic desire, our own way of saying life is more than a, just a glass of water. Life is richer, interesting, exciting. And to prove it, we humans have created all this wonderful universe of things that we surround ourselves. From design club, design shoes, hat, scarf, cane, wine, beer, alcohol, this, that, and the other thing. Because it creates the wonderful things that we call life, civilizations. Who the hell wants to go back in the cave with a bunch of skirts around our butt and drink from a pond where maybe a bear or somebody peed in it and we call that natural? <laughs> Please, natural? No, that's disgusting. I actually had done that when I used to be in a mountain. Wait for raining water and go drink. No, 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 no. I prefer a really nice glass of oligo mineral water from our natural sources and a great glass of wine from anyone who makes a great glass of wine every day of the week. So, listen to me. The paradox is that too many people talking and makes no sense. And the fact is, you should always have a guilt-free enjoy a great glass of wine with your friends, with your family, with your lovers, with your wife or boyfriend, whatever it is that you have and makes, makes sense in your life. Coming from someone like me, it's a very sage advice and take it. Make sure that when people start talking too much, you say, you know what, all the, the thoughts, let me finish the second and the third sip and then we'll let him kind of pzz, fizz out like a bad, bad bottle of cava or a really crappy champagne. And after that, when he start again or she start again, he says, you know, let me ask you a question. What are the most important joy in your life? There's anything I can do for it to make your life more joyful, less guilty. See what happens. Guys, my friends, I know sometimes the truth is much more exciting than the story that people come up with. So here's my truth. Love you. Have fun. And next time you open a bottle of wine, just close your eyes and imagine, where am I right now? I'm in Napa, Sonoma, Mendocino, Spain in, in the wonderful area of uh, Tempranillo. I'm down south of France, maybe the hills of Tuscany, even the island of Greece, Santorini. Do you imagine? Why not? It's wonderful. In the meantime, I wish you a wonderful weekend. Stay safe. And more importantly, find the joy in your life.